how it is dissipated and what is the fate all these things yesterday we have discussed and today you will see the pharmacological action of the histamines because histamine is an autocoid autocoids are the local hormones and uh, they are produced from locally from histidine then histamine is released in the uh, from the mast cells of the body so the histamine causes marker dilatation of smaller blood vessels because whenever there is a allergy the blood vessels will be dilated and the capillaries are also dilated and the vasodilatation the mechanism how the vasodilatation is caused is by h1 histaminic receptor stimulation mediated through endothelial derived dependent relaxing factor or edrf now it is uh, very well characterized that endothelial derived relaxing factor is nitric oxide and the receptor being located on the endothelial cells and h2 receptors are very specifically they are located on the gastric parietal cells but they also act on the vascular smooth muscles and uh, cause the dilatation and uh, whereas the larger arteries are little bit constricted by the histamines and mediated by h2 receptors so the h2 receptors are very specific to the gastric parietal cell and they are involved in the gastric hydrochloric acid secretion process and histamine also causes increased capillary permeability to separation of endothelial cells leading to exudation of plasma so whenever there is a allergy and other thing you can see the wheel and flare response because this is known as triple response all the inflammatory cells and also the inflammatory exudates will ooze out and this is primarily the h1 receptor response and especially in case of allergy induced responses we are administering the h1 receptor antagonists or they are also known as the anti histamines and here you can learn one important terminology that is known as the triple response so what's a triple response so whenever you inject the histamine intradermally it will elicit three responses which is consisting of one there is will be a red spot due to intense capillary dilatation then there will be a wheel due to the exudation of fluid from capillaries and venules and the flare is known as the redness surrounding the area due to arteriolar dilatation mediated by axon reflex so triple response is a response to antihistamine if it is uh, injected intradermally there will be three responses the a red spot will be formed which is due to intense capillary dilatation local dilatation will be there and there will be a wheel due to exudation of fluid and capillaries and venules and there will be a flare then uh, flare means redness in the surrounding area due to arteriolar dilatation mediated by the pain also there will be there that's known as the wheel flare response or triple response and in the heart the histamines uh, heart are not prominent but the isolated heart especially guinea pig stimulated the rate of force of contraction is increased simply you remember that the rate of force of contraction by histamine relief the heart rate will be increased and these are predominantly h2 responses but h1 mediated negative dromotopic means the slowing up of av conduction has also been demonstrated so the heart rate etc are mediated by h2 type of the response that's in very high doses of the what you call as the histamines and here you can see the wheel flare and edema responses by on the h1 receptor mediated thing there will be increased vascular permeability that's uh, the edema and obstruction occurs so usually there will be edema of the local tissue and there will be stimulation of sensory nerve ending and this leads to itching and sneezing especially in the upper respiratory tract so whenever you have the cold especially a, uh, due to the dust allergy and all those things which will lead to sneezing and itching effect in the nose whereas the glandular reaction 
they produce lot of mucus and other thing that's known as the rhinorrhea it's known as the rhinorrhea whereas on the skin there will be vasodilatation and increased vascular permeability which is leading to erythema and edema skin edema will be present so whenever you are bitten by a, a insect or anything which is due to the histamines are released then you will get all this type of the response so the wheel and flare responses are stimulated by the sensory nerve endings so usually the sensory nerve endings are stimulated and this cause the itching severe itching will be there whenever the allergy or any other responses and the itching is due to it is suspected that h3 and h4 receptor antagonists may be of a better pruritic relief whereas the regular antihistamines do not have much response and apart from this one on the smooth muscles uh, the there will be vomiting diarrhea that no on the central aspect the vomiting diarrhea will be seen there are the smooth muscles etc they got the constriction of the respiratory tract and respiratory bronco constriction and wheezing will be seen of course the uh, allergy induced asthma or allergy induced respiratory problem will usually respond to dentist means whereas the asthma is totally different it is a beta adrenergic mediated response and apart from this one many other uh, chronic allergic inflammation and uh, the dermatitis and release of other pro inflammatory mediators such as leukotrienes and cytokines are also present the histamine cannot itself mediate all the responses of inflammation so it is along with that the other inflammatory responses or other inflammatory mediators like leukotrienes and uh, the cytokines it is going to have the total inflammatory effect and visceral smooth muscles of course the histamine causes bronchoconstrictions and because of this bronchoconstriction the whenever there is an allergy maybe the dust allergy pollen grain allergy and many thing many times the allergy will be there then there will be constriction of the windpipe that is the tracheal constriction will be present and of course the smooth muscles are uh, contracted of the trachea and has uh, the there is problem for the breathing and bronchial especially the bronchoconstriction will be there and uh, blood pressure there is uh, uh, in a large doses it is uh, blocked only by combination of h1 and h2 receptor antagonists so the dilatation of uh, cranial uh, vessels causes the pulsatile headache so whenever you have the allergy all these other things are being followed so the uh, allergic responses not only induce the itching pain and other things so it also initiates the headache or the migraine yesterday we have learned three types of the migraines the mild migraine medium type and severe type of the migraines etc which are mediated by the 5ht response and glands histamine causes marked increase in the gastric secretions through h2 type of the receptors and the pepsin is also released and this all these responses are through h2 receptors uh, very specific h2 receptors and increased cyclic amp activity will be there which opens the proton pump or it is also known as hydrogen potassium atpase pump and histamine can increase other secretions also but the effect is hardly not observable so it's very specific that the gastric cells do contain the h2 type of the receptor and the acid secretion is mediated by the histamine release whereas the sensory nerve endings so whenever there is an allergy there is uh, what you call as itching and pruritis how it is going to be ha happen that is due to the sensory nerve effect so itching occurs whenever histamine is injected iv or intracutaneously usually it is local acting and higher concentration injected more deeply can cause pain and these are reflections of the capacity of histamine 
then they are going to stimulate the nerve endings. So the, it is uh, thought that it is due to the H3 and H4 type of the receptors and in course of autonomic ganglia and adrenal gland. So whenever there is an allergy or pruritis, so usually there will be the release of the adrenaline and on the central nervous system, the histamine does not penetrate blood brain barrier. Please note this thing. That's why whenever there is an allergy or other thing, no CNS effects are there. Only histamines can act peripherally, no centrally, because it is not at all crossing the blood brain barrier. So please remember this thing. So, so when uh, please correlate in such a way that whenever you have allergy, maybe due to dust allergy or food allergy or whatever it may be, no central nervous system effect or maybe drowsiness, convulsions or the ataxia which are related to central nervous system. These are not at all happening. The, the reason being is the histamines does not penetrate, histamine does not penetrate the BBB, blood brain barrier. So, and uh, the pathophysiological role of the histamines are uh, their dominant physical, physiological role in HCL in case of uh, gastric uh, tissue and non mast cell histamine occurs in gastric mucosa. Non mast cell means it is locally produced there and act as a local hormone or atakai. So the non mast cell histamines occurs in gastric mucosa and they are called as the histaminocytes situated very close to the parietal cells because on the parietal cells the H2 type of the receptors are located and H2 types of the receptors are linked with that of the proton pump and proton pump is responsible for the production of gastric acid and the histamine is released locally under influence of many stimuli maybe the gastric secretion like vagal stimulation cholinergic drugs and gastrin all these are going to increase the secretion of the histamine and all these activate the proton pump that's also hydrogen potassium ATP and this is through H2 receptors and H2 blockers not only suppress the acid secretion by a histamine but also markedly diminish that response to acetylcholine and gastric so when the gastric secretion they do also concurrently act with acetylcholine and gastrin to increase the gastric hydrochloric acid. So these are all the secretogos uh, responses to each other. The, the, the histamine will have a synergistic action and uh, the anti-muscarinic drugs such as the uh, atropine and congeners dampen the response to histamine and gastrin also. And all the secretogogs, all these three secretogogs activate uh, the same through the proton pump in the parietal cells but by their own receptors. And this is the pictorial demonstration how the, uh, uh, this histamine is going to act and, and the different drugs are there, how they are going to act on the different type of the tissues especially on the gastric cells. So acetylcholine uh, it will act on the enterochromaffin cells and the gastrin is released. So gastrin in turn it is uh, going to release the endogenous uh, histamines and it is going to combine with that of this histamine receptor and whenever there is uh, histamine receptors are activated then adilinyl cyclase will be activated. And because of this thing, the protein kinase, PKC, protein kinase C will be activated. Then in turn, it is going to act on the hydrogen potassium ATP pump or it's also known as the proton pump. And because of this thing, the potassium ions are coming inside and hydrogen ions are coming outside. And there, the chloride ions will be already present in the gastric uh, lumen inside. Hence, uh, the action will be initiated and more and more HCL is, is produced. Whereas the prostaglandin or PGE2 are also going to negatively affect the adenyl cyclase and inhibit the uh, 
protein kinase then they are going to have the negative effect on the hydrogen potassium pump and less acid is produced that's why the prostaglandin pg the uh, what you call as non steroidal anti inflammatory act agents which act on the uh, cyclooxygen 2 enzyme they are going to increase the acid secretion and decrease the mucin secretion so here you can see that the histamines are acting through the H2 type of the receptors and uh, the antagonists like ranitidine, pharmotidine, semetidine and many tidines are there. They are going to act on the H2 type of the receptor and block them and further acid secretion will be reduced through proton pump. This is the mechanism how the histamines are going to increase the acid secretion and antihistamines H2 receptor antagonists are going to decrease. So here the gastrin, histamine, PGE2 and acetylcholine that are simultaneously acting and going to ultimately act on the proton pump. That's why the proton pump are inhibitors, proton pump inhibitors are like omeprazole, pantoprazole, lansoprazole, ribeprazole. All these drugs are very very potent pentacids or anti as gastric uh, hydrochloride represents so this these agents because this is the ultimate gateway how the uh, hydrochloric acid is formed and hence one can easily assume this particular pathway please remember the pathway so that you can uh, what you call as remember the action on h2 receptors especially on the gastric cells and this is another thing which in which uh, the uh, how many is here this is the gastric parietal cells and the superficial epithelial cells these are all the superficial epithelial cells and in this diagram we can see that each are interrelated especially the gastrin is uh, also going to activate the cholecystokinin then uh, gastrin is also acting on the CCK2 receptors and histamines uh, are uh, stimulated from the ECL enterochromaffin cells and they are going to act on H2 type of the receptor. This is a cyclic AMP dependent pathway. It is going to open the proton pump here. You can see that the proton pumps. Whereas the H2 receptor antagonists which can block this particular receptor can act as antacids. Whereas here you can see that ranitidine, pharmotidine, cimatidine, all these H2 receptor antagonists are going to act on H2 type of the receptors, increase cyclic AMP dependent pathway, increase acid secretions. Whereas the uh, what you call as the uh, uh, acetylcholine, whenever the vagus nerve is stimulated, then it's going to act through the M. M muscarinic type of receptor, it also increases the concentration of histamines, then the same pathway undergoes. Whereas the muscarinic antagonists, they have the separate receptors and also the prostaglandin, prostaglandins or PGE2 and PGI2, they are, called, uh, they are acting on the specific, the these prostaglandin receptors and inhibit the pathway of leading to opening up of the proton pump and it will not it will be closed that's the negative actions and there will be decrease in cyclic amp and less acid is formed whereas the prostaglandin maybe e2 or i2 they are going to act on the prostaglandin receptors whereas they on the superficial epithelial cells more and more mucus is produced and also they are going to produce or extrude the bicarbonate ions. So here the prostaglandins they are going to increase the bicarbonate concentration, increase the mucus production and decrease the acid production so that totally acid production will be decreased. So whenever the uh, misoprostol is an agonist of PGE2 and PGI2, when this is administered then it is going to uh, protect the 
gastric cells from the damage from the acid because the 3 to 4 is the normal pH here and the proton pumps inhibitors are going to act locally and the hydrogen potassium ATP speech and the varieties of this bismuth and other thing these are all the and here especially anyway we are going to learn it later but helicobacter pylori helicobacter pylori is an organism which is going to worsen the ulcers which is induced by hyperacidity and hence the ulcers will never heal especially in case of the stomach and because of this thing the antibiotic combination uh, is uh, given like metronidazole, tetracycline, clarithromycin and amoxicillin. It's a combination of this is, this is known as pyloric kit. All these uh, are administered for 7 to 8 days and they are going to destroy the helicobacter pylori. Ultimately the ulcers are healed. That's how the mechanism goes. Whereas the sucralfate and uh, carbinoxalon these are going to act as the cytoprotective agents, especially cytoprotective agents. You can see that the uh, in the case of mucus layer, the pH is 7, whereas the gastric lumen, here acid is present and the pH is 2. And certain drugs like the pyrenzepin are going to act on the musculinic type of the receptor and going to increase the bicarbonate uh, concentrations and also they are going to inhibit the hydrogen potassium ATP. So this is the mechanism how histamine and many other chemical substances are going to increase the or decrease the gastric hydrochloric acid secretions. Usually the potassium is exchanged with chloride whereas the hydrogen is extruded out and usually the hydrogen and chloride they combine here and form the acid. So the gastric lumen pH is this two, just two, and you can imagine how much acidic uh, percent will be there. If it is directly in contact with that of the gastric mucosal cells, definitely it would have been burned. So that's known as why it is called as the heart burn. You, you can feel the feeling of burn whenever you are suffering from the acidity, gastric acidity. So uh, now you may be very clear about the action of H2 receptor antagonists like the carmotidine, the ranitidine, cimatidine. Cimatidine is of course will be withdrawn because it causes a, it causes a specific condition known as gynecomastia and hence it is withdrawn whereas the rabiprazole, pentaprazole, omeprazole are the proton pump inhibitors. And Allergic phenomenon, how allergy? Just imagine that some, suppose you are having some dust allergy and the pollen grains, grains uh, are entering the nose and you start sneezing immediately. And the mediation of hypersensitivity reaction was first role ascribed to the histamine. That's the very, very important aspect of the histamines. It causes severe hypersensitivity reaction. So it is an important but only one of the mediators of such phenomena and released from the histamine released from the cells following antigen antibody reaction on their surface and the antibody that is the IgE type of the reaction and the reagenic antibodies are involved here and immediate type of the type 1 hypersensitivity reactions. Histamine is uh, positive for the urticaria and already we know that it is going to stimulate the nerve endings, sensory nerve endings and uh, edema of the heart, NGO edema. So many times the bronchoconstriction and anaphylactic shock will be produced, especially whenever there is hyper histamine released. The H1 antagonists are very effective in controlling these manifestations to a considerable extent, except asthma. Asthma, there is no role of the histamine. Whereas in asthma, it is totally mediated by the sympathetic nervous system. And the asthma to a lesser extent anaphylactic fall in BP, which in which the leukotrins, especially leukotrin D4, and platelet activating factors appear to be more important. 
So whenever there is an allergy, then we cannot attribute the entire thing to the H, uh, histamines, but also along with the histamines, so many other mediators like leukotrins, then the platelet activating factors, many other factors are also involved and histamine is not involved in delayed or retarded type of the allergies. Delayed allergies, if the mechanism is uh, totally different, whereas the acute allergic symptoms are mediated by the histamines. And here you can see the mechanism of antigen antibody reaction, especially the histamine is released from the mast cell. So in case of the uh, mast cell, then you can see that the IgE antibody, the structures will be there, then this will be bounded by histamine, then the protein kinase is activated, which will activate PIP2, phosphate, uh, inositol diphosphate to inositol triphosphate, then calcium channel, calcium will be activated and it's going to fuse the vesicles inside the mast cells and the granules will be opened and histaminesis is re uh, released so that it is going to act on the histamine receptors. So this is how the antigen antibody, antigen means it may be a pollen grain or it may be a substance from an insect or it may be the substance which is from the plant source also. Sometimes some of the plants, urtica, dioca, etc. They are the histamine releasing plants. So ultimately this is the mechanism how it is going to act on mast cells. And histamine also serves as the neurotransmitter. So histamine is also the neurotransmitter means it should elicit the nerve responses. So it is uh, believed to be the afferent neurotransmitters. Affair, afferent means away from the organ or sensory nerves. In case of sensory nerves, histamine is believed to be the one of the neurotransmitters. And non-mast cell histamine occurs in brain. Non-mast cell histamine means the in case of brain, the histamine is not stored in case of the mast cell. So directly it is released and the histidine is taken up from the uh, nerve endings or the brain cells, then it is converted to histamine and especially the hypothalamus and midbrain. So especially the histamine is relieved in, is, uh, released endogenously from non-mast cells occurs in brain, especially the hypothalamus and midbrain. So this is involved in maintaining the wakefulness means the person should be awake and H1 antihistaminics owe their sedative action to blockade of this function. So whenever you take like some drugs like say, uh, except uh, this CPM, chlorpheniramine milliate, avil, etc., which is phenyramine milliate, you will feel drowsy and it is advised that you should never drive after taking the antihistamines. But the modern antihistamines like citrazine and uh, astemazole, terfenadine, all these do not have the central nervous system actions. So what happens? The histamine is released, is involved in maintaining the wakefulness. Whereas antihistamines of the first category, they are going to suppress this uh, histaminic activities and cause drowsiness. And in the brain, H1 agonism suppresses the appetite. So the thing is, if more and more quantity of the histamine is there, your appetite, the person's appetite will be decreased. And this may explain the appetite promoting action of certain H1 antagonists. The H1 antagonists like cyproheptadine and many other this H1 receptor antagonists are classical histaminergic responses are suppressed by the H1 receptor antagonists and it is going to increase the appetite by the opposite action to that of the histamine. Histamine also appears to participate as a neurotransmitter, especially in case of body temperature, cardiovascular function, thirst and possibly other function. And this is mediated by maybe the H2 receptor, postsynaptic receptor and H3. But no H1 receptor 
are involved whereas the, in all other activities the h1 the receptors are involved especially the act, act on the heart etc so in the body there are varieties of the cells which are producing the histamines here you can see that the major histamine producing cells is one of the most important cells are the mast cells so how uh, the activation signal goes by the ige cross linking and uh, the complement allergy inducing drugs they are going to release a lot of histamine and going to elicit the action whereas the basophils also do secrete the histamines whereas the ige cross linking a complement allergy inducing drugs whereas the enterochromaffin cells the histamine is released by the activations after receiving the signal from somatostatin and gastrin whereas the histaminergic neurons will be present and the activation of n methyl d aspartate and uh, dopamine etc serotonin receptors they are going to increase the secretion of the histamine ultimately all the responses related to the increase in the histamine will be the response whereas the other minor histamine producing cells are the dendritic cells especially in case of nervous system t cells the macrophages then the neutrophils of the body and epithelial cells all these are the minor histamine producing cells so the major histamine producing cells are mast cell basophil enterochromaffin cells and histaminergic neurons minor dendrite cell t cells macrophages neutrophils and epithelial cells and the, the histamine uh, may be majorly it is uh, released from mast cells of course the basophils eosinophils and enterochromaffin cells very commonly and it's going to act on the skin then lung and gastric mucosa so the allergic reactions are mediated by the specific antigen may be a pollen grain may be may be a insect bite or may be a contact with histamine releasing uh, plants so it is going to act on the b, b cells then it is going to become the plasma cells then plasma cells do release lot of the ige type of the antibodies and these antibodies are going to act on the mast cells and there will be production of huge quantity of the histamines and also the in case of allergic reaction this is the mechanism whereas in case of the tissue injury how it is going to cause is once again the histamines are released from mast cells mast cells and uh, many pathogens are going to act on the mast cell and release the histamine and thus the tissue injury occurs especially the uh, drugs and foreign chemicals like the venoms especially venoms of some arthropods antibiotic bases and the dyes and alkaloids many morphine and other uh, alkaloids are also going to secrete the histamines and causing some allergic responses and apart from this one the very important uh, receptor stimulation includes the apart from the histaminergic receptors which are involved in the allergic process are adrenaline uh, especially it is required for fight or flight neurotransmitter then uh, the noradrenaline what happens is the it is also acting as the neurotransmitter whereas the dopamine is a pleasure neurotransmitter whereas the serotonin or hydroxytryptamine is a mood neurotransmitter so you can remember the fight or flight neurotransmitter is adrenaline concentration neurotransmitter is the noradrenaline pleasure neurotransmitter is dopamine and mood a study we have learned the mood elevator selective serotonin deactic inhibitors they are all the mood neurotransmitter the gaba is a calming neurotransmitter so whenever you are excited gaba activation makes you to calm whereas the learning neurotransmitter is acetylcholine whereas the glutamate is memory neurotransmitter so you are uh, reading so many things and ultimately you have to memorize them by the examination so this type of action is mediated by glutamate whereas the gaba is calming 
and endorphins are uh, uh, involved in euphoria means excitation neurotransmitters endorphins and encephalins especially morphine and other drugs uh, if you take them then there will be the what you call as initial excitation will feel that you are better in many situations that's known as the euphoria neurotransmitter so histamine is the allergy neurotransmitter and the h2 type of the receptors the blockage is going to cause the what you call as the decreased release of gastric hydrochloric acid and the agents in all are semetidine famotidine nizatidine and ranitidine of course the semetidine is withdrawn from the market and the gastrin from the gastric cells and enterochromaphyl cells the histamines are released and are going to act on the specific H2 type of receptor, increased cyclic AMP, then increase in acid secretion. Whereas the acetylcholine is also going to activate the receptors, M2 type of the receptors, and increased calcium intake or increased calcium, then it's going to open the hydrogen potassium ATPase. Whereas the gastrin and other drugs also mediated through specific type of the receptor, especially in the stomach. So the cimatidine is going to cause the gynecomastia on the males or and hence it is withdrawn. It is going to increase the concentration of estrogen with a non-specific mechanisms and hence it is withdrawn from the market at present. Whereas the other drugs, famotidine, nijatidine, ranitidine, all tidines are still present in the market. So even though the very potent proton pump inhibitors are in the market, in spite of that thing, the H2 receptor antagonists are still present in the market because of their own advantage. Few of the advantages are there and we will deal them when we are dealing with the antacids. And here you can see that H1, this is the uh, diagrammatic representation how H1 receptor antagonists or blockers or they are also known as antihistamines, they are going to act. So there are uh, two categories uh, of this base, uh, especially the H1, uh, especially H1 blockers, they are classified as first generation H1 blockers whereas and also the second generation H1 blockers. First generation H1 blockers do have many central nervous system activity and the, they are going to cross the blood brain barrier, especially the H1 receptor antagonists, not the histamine. Histamine is locally produced. It is, if you administer the histamine, it is not going to pass through blood brain barrier. But so endogenously released histamine causes the, what you call as the sleep or awakeness, especially awakeness and the antihistamines we are going to act on the brain and induces sleepiness, especially first generation. And whereas the other responses like the, the examples like bromocryptin, chlorpheniramine, lemastin, semistin, all these drugs are the classical examples of the first generation antihistamines. So apart from this one, the Cyproheptidine, diphenoxidramine, then doxylamine. They are also belonging to the H1 receptor antagonists acting through the alpha type of the receptor. And of course, the serotonin, the some of the drugs do have the serotonergic activity along with the antihistaminic activity like hydroxyzine, uh, meclizine, buclizine and promethergia. Promethazin or Finergan is the trade name for the first generation antihistaminics. Whereas the second generation antihistamines do have very less CNS effect. So they do not induce drowsiness. You can drive safely after taking the H2, this uh, H2 type of the response, this uh, second generation H1 receptor antagonists. Uh, the example I think you might have many of you are very familiar with cetirizine for all the running nose and itching nose you are taking cetirizine or levocetirizine and 
loratadine all these uh, drugs are taken uh, and these do do lack the central nervous system activity whereas the first generation uh, histamines and histamines they are having lot of cns activities then uh, the inflammation how it is mediated and how it is reduced by antihistamines histamine is a major uh, mediator of the vasodilatation and other changes that occur during the inflammation so the it is going to promote the addition of leukocytes to each other vascular endothelium by expression of addition molecule known as p selectin so there will be a addition molecules like p selectin on endothelial cell surface and sequestering the leukocytes at the inflammatory site and tissue growth and repair will be occurring with the help of the histamines and because the growing and regenerating tissues contain very high concentration of the histamine and it has been suggested to play an uh, essential role in the process of growth and repair that's how it uh, is going to heal the tissues and the classical uses of the antihistamines uh, especially histamines histamines as such have no therapeutic value please remember that histamines do not cross the blood brain barrier and they do not have any therapeutic value so once upon a time it was used to for acid secreting capacity of the stomach but uh, uh, because of the other side effects bronchial hypersensitivity in asthmatics and also for the diagnosis of po proomocytoma it's a tumor of adrenal medulla so in which lot of catecholamines are secreted and uh, it's very risky to administer the histamines for the diagnostic purpose also and now it is totally stopped the histamine use in at least as a diagnostic agent it is stopped so histamines as such do not have any therapeutic value as on day and some of the anti histaminergic agonists are there like beta histine it is orally active h1 selective histamine analog so you have to remember few of the drug h1 receptor agonist is the histamine itself and beta histine so this active analog which used to control vertigo in patients with meners disease meners disease please remember this is one of the uh, it's a disorder of the inner ear that is characterized by episodes of feeling like world being spilling or vertigo ringing in the ears or tinnitus it is known as tinnitus and sometimes deafness or hearing loss and the fullness in the yeah so this is known as manners disease and this is the, so in this is the only drug to treat the manners disease like beta histine so it uh, possibly acts by causing vasodilatation in the internal ear and it is contraindicated in asthmatics and ulcer patients because in case of ulcer patient more and more acid secretion will be there whereas in case of asthmatic patients so bron bronco constriction will be more and more so what is a meners disease so it is usually the especially inner ear of the ear will be there will be excess fluid causes swelling and pressure of the inner ear and swelling distorts the balance because this is the one uh, the especially ear is the one which is going to have the body balance type of the mechanism and swelling distorts the sound sound disruption will be there in case of meners disease and distorted information travels to the brain so inst instead of the correct response traveling to the brain distorted information travels to the brain and hence the, all these clinical signs will happen and uh, the histamine releasers are there there are uh, very few things which are going to release more and more histamines so the histamine release is by the tissue damage trauma the stings of venoms and proteolytic enzymes and phospholipase a are produced in case of tissue damage and cause tissue damage whereas the antigen antibody reaction involving ige antibodies cause the allergic response and polymers like dextran and 
PVP polyvinyl pyrrolidines are also going to release the histamines and some of the basic drugs like DTC or D tubocurarin, morphine, atropine, pentomidine, polymyxin B, vancomycin and even the certain antihistamines directly release histamine without an immunological reaction. So it may be surprising to you that certain antihistamines they themselves will cause the allergy. So this is by this uh, mechanism directly they are going to release histamine without any immunological reactions. And uh, surface uh, acting antigens like Queen 80 and compound 4080 etc are going to release the histamine and uh, they are known as the histamine liberators. These all these things uh, just the drugs like Ubocororin and trauma etc then Queen 80 compound 4880 are the liberators of histamines and they produce the anaphylactic reaction. So, some many times twin 80 or compound 4080 and many other things do have the anaphylactic reactions and itching and uh, burning sensation, flushing, urticaria, urticaria, fall in blood pressure, tachycardia, headache, colic and asthma is noticed especially in case of the histamine liberators and most of these symptoms are controlled by H1 antihistaminics but still if H2 blocker is given together because many times H1 and H2 may be also be responsible for the follows this action and coming to the first agents that's the H1 receptor antagonists they are also known as the conventional antihistamines because in veterinary practice also in medical practice also many times the antihistamines are very commonly used in varieties of the situation so we have to study it in detail and these drugs completely competitively antagonize the action of histamine at h1 receptor receptors wherever they are present and recent evidences indicate that the histamine h1 receptor exhibits more degree of the constitutive activity and H1 antagonists are also known as the inverse agonists, means which induce the opposite type of the action. The new generation antihistamines are less sedating agents, means the CNS depression is uh, less when compared to the uh, older generation or the classical antihistamines. And the H1 antihistamines have diverse chemical structures, but majority have a substituted ethylamine side chain and here the classification of uh, the histamine is by, done by many many methods clinical classification and uh, here you can see the dose of this uh, antihistamines so it is uh, um, basically classified as highly sedative agents moderately sedative agents and mild sedative agents so the example of the highly sedative agents like diphenhydramine or Benadryl syrup. So many persons get addicted with that of the Benadryl syrup and uh, that's the containing di diphenhydramine hydrochloride. So the doses of all these things is 25 to 50 milligram and varieties of the preparations are available. And uh, promethazine or phenergan is a trade name of promethazine and you can see that this is a highly sedative means if you take consume this uh, tablets you will get a lot of drowsiness because of the antihistaminic property because histamine is a wakeful harm we wakeful autocrite and if it is uh, un unable to bind with that of the receptors in the brain it is going to cause the drowsiness and moderately sedative agents are phenyramine milliate or avil, moderately sedative. And, and another drug known as cyproheptadine, it's also an appetite stimulating agent. It's available as tractin and ciplactin very commonly. And other agents like meclizine and cinerazine do also moderately sedative drugs and histamines. And mild sedative drugs like chlorpheniramine milliate or CPM, which is very commonly used in case of 
the veterinary practice for varieties of the purposes, especially in case of allergies induced by drugs or sometimes the insect or honeybee biting and also in dermatitis or pruritis or many kinds the antihistamines like chlorpheniramine, it's also known as cadistin or piritam or chlorine. So, and another thing is dexchlorpheniramine, then triprolidine, all this clemastin, these are the drugs which have very mild sedative action, antihistamines with sedative, very mild sedative action. And the another classification is the second generation antihistamines and these second generation antihistamines do lack the CNS depression action, especially the drowsiness is not caused by these drugs. And the classical example of this category are loratadine, fexfenadine and uh, cetirigine or cetirigine, levocetirigine, azelastine and uh, ebastine etc. So uh, all these drugs are not going to cause the drowsiness and the terfenadine and astimozole are banned nowadays even though they are having the secondary activity to that of the antihistamines and uh, non-drowsiness causing agents. Terfenadine, astimozole, once upon a time these drugs were very commonly prescribed because of the lack of the CNS activity. But they are later banned by many of the countries because they cause the cardiac arrhythmia because the QT interval was prolonged because of the action of these drugs on the heart. And many people succumb to the cardiac problems after administration of these drugs. And during the post market surveillance, surveillance these drugs are banned and withdrawn from the market. And the drugs, if you ask the question, drugs banned or the taste means banned uh, because of the cardiotoxicity due to the prolonged QT interval are the terfenadine and astimazole, both drugs. So the pharmacological actions of this H1 uh, antihistamines are antagonism of the histamine is the main target site. They effectively block the histamine induced bronchoconstriction and contraction of the intestinal and other smooth muscles and triple response, you know, wheel flare responses and edema responses. So they are going to decrease the triple response and fall in BP produced by low doses of histamine is blocked, but addition of antagonists are required for complete blockade of caused by very higher doses. And pre-treatment of these drugs protectors animals from death due to injection of large doses of the histamine. And release of the adrenaline from adrenal medulla in response to Histamine is always abolished by the administration of the antihistamines. And the constriction of large blood vessels by histamine is also antagonized. The action of the histamine on gastric secretion is uh, singularly not affected by any of the H1 receptor antagonists. So there are very specific H2 receptor antagonists are available for the gastric acid inhibition property. Whereas the cyproheptadine has got additional 5-HT2 activity and hence it can be used as a appetite stimulating agent. An anti-allergic action of these agents is uh, brought by many manifestations of immediate hypersensitivity reactions, type 1 hypersensitivity reaction. Urticaria, itching and angioedema are very well controlled and anaphylactic fall in DP is only partially, it is uh, uh, prevented. Asthma in man is practically unaffected because H1 receptors are not involved, especially in the bronchoconstriction. So, this uh, tissue, especially the trachea and other tissue dependence of the response of probably reflects extent of the histamine in reaction. So, the leukotrins C4, LT, C4, LTD4 and platelet actuating factors 
are more important mediators of the human asthma rather than the histamines. And apart from the adrenaline also, the central nervous system, the older antihistamines produce variable degree of CNS depression and this appears to depend on the compound's ability to pass the blood-brain barrier. And the recent agents are not passing the blood-brain barrier, not going to inhibit the CNS uh, awakeness property of the histamines. And few H1 antihistamines are effective in preventing the motion sickness. It is very important thing that some of you might have got this motion sickness whenever we are traveling in a bus, especially in the hilly regions, this is caused. And it is not clear whether this is due to the antagonism of the histamine in the brain or reflects anti-muscarinic property of the antihistamines. And uh, these are all the drugs like promethazine controls vomiting of pregnancy and other causes. Whereas the promethazine and few other antihistamines reduce tremor, rigidity and siluria, increase the resecretion of Parkinsonism. And the cyproheptadine has the appetite stimulating effect and some H1 antihistamines are also effective antipassive means in case of calf syrups there are the common ingredients. So here you can see that cyproheptadine hydrochloride a syrup is available for kids and also the cyproheptadine tablets are available which are very specifically used for the appetite increasing property. And analytic cholinergic action, especially the H1 blockers, in addition, in addition, uh, the uh, antagonize the muscarinic action of the acetylcholine. The anticholinergic action can be graded as high, low, or minimal or absent. And if used concurrently with atropine or its congeners. The phenothysins, tricyclic antidepressants or disparamide, the anticholinergic action and so. So you can see once again, uh, just for remembering the high, low or minimal or absent CNS action. So highly, the drug highly cause, uh, causing high depression of CNS are promethazine, diphenhydramine, diminadrate and phenyramine, all these are, whereas the low are chlorpheniramine, hydroxyzine and tripolidine and also the cyproheptidine. Whereas the minimal or absent CNS activity is not there like fexofenadine, then astimazole, terfenadine, loratadine, cetrazine and mesolastic. All these drugs are lacking the CNS represent activity because they are not going to pass the blood-brain barrier.